Conservancy is uh, 63,000 hectares um, consisting of 12 properties where they um, took down all their cattle fences and perimeter fences and formed one uh, large um, body of land which we now know as the Midlands Black Rhino Conservancy. We did have uh, in the region of about 60 rhino but over the last few years the poaching has been so terrible we've we're down now to only five um, and these five um, have been protected by a new um, uh, patrolling system which we brought out where our monitors stick with the rhino 24 7 day and night so we've got 10 monitors in all um, these are very dedicated bunch of guys they get up in the morning uh, at before first light uh, they get dressed and they go off uh, to where they last saw the rhino the day before. Uh, they pick up the tracks from there and then they follow on from there until uh, they catch up to the rhino and then they stick with those rhino and, until last light. As we need to have our rhino dehorned. Um, uh, this in itself uh, detracts the poachers from coming in and, and shooting the rhino. Work entailed in, by these monitors is actually um, it's quite dangerous and very intensive. They, their job is to actually um, protect the rhino from poachers. Uh, one man, my 2IC, Ranganai Chishaya, um, has actually been um, bowled over by the rhino on many occasions. And he won't change his job. He's, he's a dedicated man and he will stay here. He's absolutely brilliant. Um, uh, and a lot of the other staff as well. They've also um, been injured by the rhino and, had to lay off a couple of days, in some cases a week to a month, to recover. Now James is uh, one of our loyal, dedicated guys, and he was actually walking through the bush, and um, he walked around a thick, thick thicket like you, we just saw back there, and uh, our big bull, Tangarida, uh, came charging out of the bush where you didn't see him, and actually hit him, and it charged and hit him on the side, of there and on his chest and knocked him over and he had to be carried out and taken to hospital where we had him x-rayed and he was fine. But the Joel got also on the wrong side of our big bad bull Tangarida and he was hurt actually quite badly. Um, Tangarida hit him, threw him in the air and then proceeded to run over him. All these guys here are uh, in the conservancy, they work for us and they've all been charged and, and knocked over by the rider at some stage in their life. Uh, their uniforms and all the kit that they do wear in it are all donated um, by uh, Nicholas Duncan and John Gripper. Um, otherwise we wouldn't have enough money to kit them out uh, with radios, weapons, um, boots especially. Uh, on one occasion um, we had some Irish tourists who came out uh, to have a look at the rhino and uh, they saw the equipment and the radios which our monitors had on them and after we'd seen the rhino, we went away to a nice little uh, shady spot and we're having our lunch and uh, they asked how do we communicate with such bad equipment and, and you know, being in tatters and all that. And uh, we just explained that we get by as best we can. They got together, this little group of Irish people, and they said, no, that's not good enough. And they immediately went away and when they went up to Arari the very next day, they bought us some radios. They bought us three radios, which was a tremendous uh, help to us. Where is one zero? One zero zero. Communications here in the Conservancy is vital, absolutely vital. So that in itself, just those three radios, was a tremendous um, gift to us. And it came out of the blue and we were very appreciative of that. Um, I take tourists out to go and see the rhino and um, we take great care in taking them to the rhino. Um, we get them into a position where they can photograph the rhino and interact with them by watching them feeding and, or just sleeping. And the other thing we'd like to do, which we're trying to do at the moment, is raise funds to build a, a proper game fence around a, a selected area within the conservancy where we can put our remaining five rhino. Because not only will it prevent the rhino from straying off the conservancy and going into dangerous areas. Uh, it will also make our job and task easier to monitor them and look after them and the costing of vehicles uh, um, running after them every day, chasing after them, because uh, they have been known to travel up to 40 kilometers in a single day. 
Now this is the type of fencing we want to put up to protect our runner and keep them in. It's a bonnex fencing. Uh, this one is two meters high, but the one we're actually looking will be one meter high because the rhino won't be able to jump over it. Um, the other animals, the other wild animals will be able to get over, but um, the rhino will come up against it and be stopped from going through. And not only that, but the expense of it will be halved if we have it only one meter high. Or maybe not halved, but it'll certainly cut the costing down by a tremendous amount. We also want to have the area cleaned like this uh, for two meters on both sides of the fence so that we can look for any crossings or break-ins or poachers coming through um, and animals and undesirables coming in. We do have a program where um, the public can adopt uh, a rhino and also adopt a monitor and then they can pay his salary or pay uh, contribute uh, an amount every single month towards uh, the rhino first of all and then secondly uh, to the monitor himself.